Following the recommendation of police boss Usman Baba, the Police Service Commission suspends Abba Kiari and Southwest Governors propose Supreme Court for geopolitical zones. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anacol. The Police Service Commission has suspended Abba Kiari from office. Inspector General of Police Usman Baba recommended the suspension as a temporary measure while the police investigate Kiari's relationship with the popular fraudster Raymond Abbas, popularly known as Hush Poppy. Kiari was indicted by a U.S. court as a conspirator in a $1.1 million fraudulent deal against Qatari businessman to be tried in the U.S. as requested by the American court. Kiari would have to be extra extradited by Nigeria or voluntarily travel to face the trial. He has, however, denied any wrongdoing. But we're going to break this down. So joining us to discuss this is Dr. Ben Okezie. Uh, he is a security analyst and, of course, a security columnist with The Sun newspaper. And we're also being joined by Mr. Ken Robinson, and he is of Pandef. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me here again. And uh, good evening, Nigeria. Good evening, Plus TV. Good evening. Like I said, Ben Okezie, okay, not doctor. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Okezi, because you are a security analyst. And, and there's so many questions, you know, um, surrounding this whole indictment. The fact that um, uh, a man who was one time super cop, who everybody celebrated all of a sudden, uh, is being, you know, entangled in this um, criminal case. And, uh, and now the FBI is asking that he be extradited uh, to uh, the U.S., um, my first question is obviously, why do you think it took the police so long to respond? Because everybody was hoping that the police would speak up immediately that um, report hit Nigeria. But it took a long time. And then the police responded by suspending him. Um, this suspension, is it a way of the police trying to separate itself from what um, the, the FBI is investigating? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, 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 I strongly believe that... Uh, the police uh, is not uh, an institution that uh, you you stamp it into taking action. Uh, when the, the oh, I think we're having connection issues. News broke. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the police what they did was hello. We can hear you. Go ahead. I think what they did was to. So yeah, what they what they did was to put it on social media, and from social media everybody got uh, the awareness. And uh, uh, being that is as it may, so police had to really study and then verify the authenticity of uh, the uh, the report before they can start uh, taking a, a decision. And then uh, uh, knowing that uh, fully well that. Uh, the personality that we are talking about is one that uh, has sacrificed a lot, both for the police and for the nation. So it's not something you just uh, uh, start uh, 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 believing that such a thing has happened. So I'm sure the police took it uh, that time just to seriously verify and then uh, before they took, took uh, action. And the action they took it's been, uh, it's been uh, appreciated and applauded by, by many. At least uh, we have seen that uh, there's integrity in place by the Inspector General of Police and that uh, they want to do all that uh, the police ought to do. Uh, I don't think they are trying in any way to cover up Abakari. Yes, Abakari is uh, it's like a beloved song because he has done a lot for the police and then uh, he's gotten uh, a lot of honors uh, uh, from both the president 
from National Assembly, from various uh, departments, you know, for the type of work uh, that he has uh, really done by rescuing people from the, uh, the den of uh, kidnappers. So uh, it's, it's not uh, that uh, the FBI uh, sent such a, a damaging report on him. Uh, it's something that will have been a shock. Uh, like, 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 it's just like a, a father uh, who uh, came back from work and then uh, saw so many people and then uh, they, they are telling him that your son was found, you know, involved in a, in a criminal act, which he never believed. And unfortunately, uh, the first thing he will do was to, is to, to draw the son into his house and question that son before uh, taking any other step. And that's why we are applauding the Inspector General of Police, uh, Baba Osman, what he has done is uh, commendable. And that's okay. the right uh, step to be taken. Mr. Robinson, um, you heard uh, Mr. Chiari, I mean, we all read um, his explanation as to um, the only connection he had with the said um, um, hush puppy. Um, what did you make of that explanation? Of course, he has also said that, um, you know, he's been cleared of wrongdoing. Um, well, rather, he's saying that he, he has not done anything wrong. He's saying that he has no idea as to a $1.1 million. He explained about some tailoring business and some materials. But what do you make of that explanation? Uh, the explanation is a bit um, wishy-washy. And um, I, I think that, that speaking uh, for, for as, as spokesman of Bandef, I... My personal opinions are very limited. Whatever I say uh, would be considered that I'm speaking for Pandev. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that Pandev uh, believes that the, what the, the position of uh, the Police Service Commission and, of course, the Inspector General of Police is appropriate, uh, they are, is commendable. Uh, they need to prove uh, to the world that uh, Nigeria is a serious country. We, we do not uh, tolerate corrupt practices. And, of course, um, Buhari. Uh, President Buhari had prided himself as um, number one, uh, one of his, his achievements, uh, according to the government, is uh, the fight against corruption. So this is a test case for the government and, of course, for the police, uh, Nigeria police. And so we, we commend the, 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 the position taken by the Police Service Commission and, of course, the Special General of Police. And we will um, advise Abba Kari, you know, since he says he's innocent, the, the United States judiciary system is um, trustworthy. It's, it's, uh, there's been a lot of proven integrity about the judiciary in the U.S. of the United States. If it's in then definitely he should, he should go there and uh, clear himself, uh, for, for not just for himself, for his family, but also for the country and the integrity of the Nigerian police force. Hmm. It's, it's important that he goes. He should go by himself. He should not even wait to be uh, sent there by the Nigerian government or extradited. He should, he should voluntarily go to the U.S. and, and clear himself of all, of all all the allegations against because the allegations are weighty and mm. they could not just be uh, written off just like that by a post on social media or whatever. Yes. Um, now, there have been also reactions that have trailed, you know, the justification of the, um, the invitation by the FBI uh, with the police uh, service commission saying that the FBI has no right whatsoever uh, to order an arrest of a Nigerian. Um, and I'm wondering, what, what, what's your reaction to that? Because they seem to be saying you shouldn't, you know, the FBI shouldn't be ordering for us to extradite one of ours. And that's what the Police Service Commission uh, had to say about that um, order. But you are, on the other hand, saying that if Abba Kiari is... Um, saying that he's guilt-free, then he should go there and prove his, he, his you know, um, innocence. So this seems, it's, it's, this it's, seems like speaking from both sides of the mouth. The, the, the police has suspended, um, you know, Abba Kiari, but then they're saying that the FBI has no right. Well, it's, 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 they need to understand that this is, uh, it has an international dimension. It's an international crime. It's, it's, it's a dent on, on, the, on, the, on the fight, uh, uh, touted fight against corruption by Mr. President and, and the, the, everything about the integrity of, of the administration and the Nigeria police. So the Police Service Commission should not uh, throw up those issues. It, the crime was committed, um, I believe, not in Nigeria. Uh, and so it's an international crime and, and FBI um, have uh, 
I'm, I'm sure that we are told, reported that there are several meetings with Inspector General of Police, and, and I'm sure that all those meetings, um, is the outcome of those meetings is what we're seeing now, the suspension of uh, Abakari. But Nigeria needs to uh, be serious about these issues, and, and that the FBI has no right to uh, be asking for someone to be sent from Nigeria is, is out of place, because Nigeria went to Kenya to arrest um, Namdi Kanu, and Nigeria is asking for uh, Sunday Bull to be uh, extradited back to Nigeria. Okay. Uh, back to you, um, Mr. Kese. I'm still going to push you on this issue because you are more of a security person. Um, if the P Police Service Commission is saying in one breath that the FBI has no right, they have no jurisdiction to ask for one of us to be extradited to the U.S., and then in the same breath have suspended the same the said, said person um, from office pending the investigations. Um, is this not some, some form of so, mixed so signals? They, they should, they should, um... No, no, no. I'm asking Mr. KJ this question because I want to hear his thoughts. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, in as much as uh, we see the uh, report from the FBI as being damaging, uh, that does not mean that uh, we should, uh, Nigeria should uh, hit everything. Uh, they have said, as uh, Nigeria is a sovereign country, uh, America is a sovereign country. Uh, this crime was, uh, uh, according to their report, perpetrated in Nigeria. Uh, the guy in question, Abbas, is a Nigerian. So if they arrested him in uh, Dubai and they would see my way to to uh, to US, already Abbas. Um, uh, lawyer had already complained on the way uh, the FBI whisked uh, uh, um, uh, um, Abbas away from uh, Dubai when he was talking on a BBC uh, program. What I what I will be saying is that if FBI truly know that um, what the information they have or the reports they have uh, or the documents they have are very, very sure. Let them send their men to Nigeria to come and then Nigeria should give them a platform where they can sit down and interrogate Abakiari. Why should they, why should they, why should he be interrogated? I'm sorry, hold on, sir. Why should he be how should why should he be interrogated? No, no, no. I'm curious and I want to ask this question. Why should he be interrogated on our own terms? He committed or he's, in, he's being indicted on international crimes. International laws immediately have to apply in this well, instance. So no, why would the, they want to the come here and interrogate him if he, he is needed? The international in the US? law, the, yes, please. The international law also, uh, there's a, a department, there's a, an institution in Nigeria that handles that same international law, that is the EFCC. That we are talking of money laundry. EFCC handles that, and EFCC is well recognized by the international body organizations. They contact EFCC for information for everything. So there's nothing wrong with that. Most, moreover, that just recently, this how same trusted America how trusted is the EFCC in terms of dealing with financial Marie. crimes? What is the we track should, record of the EFCC should, in terms of dealing with international crimes? We should crimes? be able to so trust far. our EFCC. Because EFCC have jailed so many governors, many ministers, you know, for corrupt practices. They are already languishing in jail right now. Just like I was saying, they are, just recently, the same America sent their marine, and their marine got in touch with the Nigerian army to rescue one of the Americans that was kidnapped and brought into Nigerian soil. And the, 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 the joint effort was successful, and the guy was uh, rescued and back to the U.S. And so, so, if, a crime, so if a crime was committed in Dubai or in the Middle East, and, and they are being tried, why can't the Nigerian police give that support, collaborate with the U.S., um, and take, allow their man to be in the U.S., maybe supported by some officers and men, to make sure that that particular investigation goes as it should instead of saying that the, the the u.s or the fbi has no right to 
you know, ask for an extradition. If, if we have had the U.S. come to our soil and collaborated with our people to, to solve a crime, why can't we do the same? Are we saying that we do not trust the FBI? Is that what you're insinuating? You see, uh, the, the case in question has to do with um, a top security officer. And thank God it's... Does it mean that because uh, he's a top uh, police officer, yeah, he's above FBI the law? No, not at all. So why are we at giving all, him a different uh, kind of priority? Uh, Senator Kamu was, was to be uh, uh, studied. But what I'm saying is that for the fact that the case we are talking about is, uh, has to do with an allegation. It's an allegation. It's still an allegation. And for because it's an allegation, they should wait. Let the Nigerian police do their own internal screening of the of the police officer. Meanwhile, they have already taken a, a rightful step by suspending him. Suspension is almost like the first part of punishment to say that they are not impressed with what they are hearing. So they have suspended him and now they have set up a panel of a DIG in charge of a, a FB, a, a post CID, in charge of the third highest criminal investigating uh, 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 team, I mean, uh, institution uh, okay. department in Nigeria, police. So, and another interesting thing, just to make sure to, to make sure that this thing is very, very complete. The person in charge of the case of the who's going to do the interrogation is not a, an outside man. So there's no ethnic affinity and there's no religious nobody, affinity. Nobody so brought that. Is, that nobody, nobody, police, I don't think anybody brought that as a concern in any way. That is not a concern. No, I mean, so that people, people will know that there's not going to be like anything like a cover up. Okay. That's what I'm talking All about. All right. Back so to that you. Like, like a cover up. So All the, right. for the past, these things have been done you know, systematically and with, with strictness, with strictness. Okay, let's... The person in, uh, in, the person in, in, in the, the person in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Ahmed Baba is not just a police officer that uh, is a police police officer that is very top and okay. very strict. Okay, all right. So we'll, we'll come back to talking about, we'll come back to talking about the person of the IG, but we're looking at the situation here. Back to you, Mr. Ken Robinson. Now, we already know that there is, you know, there are a group of people who already uh, feel like the, the, the relationship between the police and the Nigerians has been a fragile one, um, one that has a lot of question marks around it. And this report um, by the FBI has also somewhat dented that already very fragile image. How does the police even intend uh, or where does the police begin uh, to deal with the issue of damage control and how... C can this also bring the issue of um, police reforms into play? The Nigerian police has had uh, a bad period. And remember the NSAS protests and the panels sitting across the country and all the that have um, been coming out of those, those, those panels and the revelations. It's, it's damning and it's, it's very unfortunate that uh, everybody thinks that we have to uh, uh, drive the best cars, live in the best environments. Uh, and that's the attitude by most persons. If you're a school teacher, be a school teacher. If you're a civil servant, be a civil servant and live within the means of being a civil servant. If you're a police officer, be content with the fact that you're a police officer yep. and, and, and live with the salaries you're being paid. If, if that is not good enough for you, leave the police first. Go and look for something that will create legitimate means for you to make more money. And, and that's contractor. the problem we have in Nigeria. And, if everybody and, wants to be alone. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Keze, can you please... So, so, so the Nigerian police force has, has an image problem. And, and this is an opportunity for them to tell the world that, look, um, not every person in the police force, not every person in the police service commission, not every Nigerian is a crook or a criminal or a thief or a 409 person or a, a cyber crime person. And so I disagree with my brother when he says the, the FBI has no business. Uh, there's a case going on in the U.S. And us Poppy has, has been sinking and he has mentioned names. Those residents in the U.S. have been arrested. As I said earlier, if Abakari truly says he's innocent, he should make himself available, go there, 
with the best lawyers. The, the country can provide the lawyers for him if they so love him. The police force can provide the best lawyers in the world for him. Go there and clear your name and clear your name and clear the image of the country. Restore the image of the Nigerian police force. It's important and we shouldn't play politics with this. Hmm. Interested. Now, Hosh Papi ag again has alleged that he bribed Kiari to arrest one Vincent Chibuzo, a co-fraudster, uh, dealing with money for punishment of your enemies. I mean, a lawyer of uh, uh, on one of the shows on Niger on Plus TV Africa said Kiari was never clean and cited a case of Evans, the kidnapper. Um, this is more like digging up the past against him. Um, I want to understand... Does this, because some of us think that Abba Kiari is a super cop, and that's what Mr. Okeze was saying, amazing cop. And then all of a sudden, we're hearing all kinds of things as to um, dirty stories that are being dug up ab about him. Um, so really, when we are looking, put, putting all of these, these things side by side, um, does it not make us largely lose more and more trust in the Nigerian police force, especially when Mr. Okeje is saying that, oh, we should allow the police to carry out its investigations. Can the police be sitting over itself in terms of, I mean, we have had cases where we've gone to the police um, service commission to say, check the police. In the case of NSAS, we've said, check the police in case of bribery. Uh, check the police in, case, in the case of illegal roadblocks. We haven't really seen that yield anything feasible. So why should we trust the police to sit over this case or this investigation and not allow the FBI take charge of that investigation? You want me to respond to that? Yes. I, I do not sincerely think that the police should um, uh, um, uh, undertake setting up a committee to um, uh, try to get the authenticity of the allegations against Abakari. This is this Why? is a national uh, a dent on a national image, and, and I would have suspected, expected rather that perhaps the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation or the Secretary of the Government of the Federation should have should have made a statement on this matter. And we need a committee at that level set up by the government of Nigeria to investigate Mr. Abakari. Well, why, why, if, why do you, think, why do you think that the federal government seems to be very um, um, mute on this particular issue? You know how the federal government is swift into re, uh, to responding to issues. I mean, just last week, uh, the U.S. government, uh, the U.S. Senate put a pause on our um, armor, um, ammunition that we were trying to buy from the U.S. and some choppers. Uh, and, that, and they cited issues of human rights abuse. And immediately, the federal government had put out abuse a statement. Is, yes. But on this matter, well, this, is almost, this is almost day four, and we're yet to hear anything from the federal government. Is it that they do not want to get involved? Yeah, we, we're yet to hear anything from, from, from the Minister of Information. No statement from the Minister of Information. No comment, no statement from the Attorney General of the Federation. And, and I'm sure everybody just uh, trying to uh, come to realization that this is happening to us and that uh, these things are there. But, but it's there in Nigeria. Uh, uh, and the Nigeria police force needs seriously to, to reevaluate, re examine itself from top to bottom, not just the ones in the streets and on the roads that collect uh, money from passengers and drivers. But the Nigeria police force needs a thorough overall uh, reevaluation and, and a complete overall of the police force. And the police reforms uh, shouldn't just be uh, peripheral; they should be total. And, and so, so we expect that the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, we expect that the, the, the Minister of Justice will, will make statements and, and actually uh, set up committees to, to see, to the, ascertain the veracity of these allegations against Abakari. Because as I said earlier, it's a dent on our national image that a, a, a police officer that has been so celebrated uh, could be uh, involved in something like that, alleged to be involved in this, this, this kind of a matter. And if it is true that he was involved in this kind of a matter, then he puts the question mark on the entire police force, all the police, including the IG of police. Who knows what are the secrets uh, uh, that may be behind him? There are people who seem to be um, saying that the government should be held responsible or accountable for this you know, level of corruption, the fact that he was, he was even indicted in the first place. Um, but should we really be laying that blame at the foot of the government uh, or should we be laying it at the foot of the police service commission and the igp just as you said that the ig um, who knows what dirt might be you know dug up on him so really where does the blame stop right now because there's some bug packing passing right now 
Um, is it a Nigerian problem, what we're facing right now? Should the police be looking at itself, you know, in retrospect to see what they can change? Or should we as Nigerians begin to reevaluate ourselves as a country? As a yes, country, I, I, will, I will start at Nigerians. Nigerians, we need to reevaluate and, uh, in fact, our value system. And I, I, I made a statement earlier. I don't know what I was, my system was uh, on mute, you know, but I was saying that if you're a civil servant, Oh dear, I think that we're having you know, connection be problems. Content with the fact that you're a civil servant and, and leave in it and go and look for a legitimate business that will give you more money. If you're a police officer, for God's sake, be a police officer. And, and I say this with all sense of responsibility. We, we celebrate falsehood in Nigeria. And, and it's a general problem, not just Buhari's problem, not just police problem, it's a Nigeria problem. Abakari comes from a place, and we hear all the stories and all the things that he has been doing around where he comes from in, in Oronu State. And he's celebrated beyond the police. If, this, if, if those reports we are getting are true, how does he get the money to do those things? Nobody asks questions before now, including police force. Hmm. And, and it's a shame. Interesting. Mr. Kezie, I'd like for you to come in here again. How do you foresee the outcome of this investigation? Because, you know, there's going to be a, a, a panel probing him. Um, the extradition might happen, um, well, no matter how long it takes, because this is an ongoing case. But again, looking at it, he, you know, looking at it, the big picture in itself, um, should we just be blaming a, a, a tiny bit of the problem, which is an Abba Chiari, or should we be looking at not just paying lip service to the issue of police reforms, but of course, you know, doing it, putting some action to it, especially in terms of the welfare of these men? Yeah, um, uh, just like um, my, my fellow um, speaker was saying, uh, yes, there's uh, an endemic problem in the police. And um, they, they are not, uh, you see, leadership uh, comes to bear in all of this. Uh, once you get a good leader, uh, you find that uh, he tries to drive the institution to uh, where he believes that uh, uh, integrity and uh, good, good uh, uh, this thing will come in. So, um, yes, there's uh, a lot of... Um, or practices, you know, going on. But uh, that notwithstanding, the police has an internal mechanism whereby they weed away uh, many of the bad officers, which uh, unfortunately they don't come to the public to announce these things that this person has been retired, this person has been dismissed, this person is being prosecuted because of one uh, crime or the other. These things are an ongoing. There is a panel. Uh, but, but, but why can't they, they let us they, know? Because vote. because we need to understand it's that people are being. Well, well, well we that, know that, this, but it, these people it, are part of our society. I know, it's and I'm not, not arguing. Everything that they do, they must bring to the public. It's not everything but they we do need that to, they must uh, But how do we, the people, also understand that justice and fair play is at work? I'm sorry, this just hold on. Thing. I'm sorry to talk I over you. Not, I'm not standing in for them. You but sound, this is but you sound like you're speaking for them. And just it's hold a, on. I'm asking. No, not at all. I, it's a security institution. I know. So we have to understand. I know. Yes. But I'm asking, it's, it's how do we ascertain? I'm sorry, Mr. You Kaiser, if you let me speak. Just hold on. Let me speak. Yeah. Okay. How do we ascertain that justice is being served, especially in cases where people are being killed, People are wrongfully detained. People um, are shot. I mean, when we see these injustices play out in the police force that we're supposed to be looking for, up to, to enforce the laws of the land, if these things are done in the dark and in the quiet, how do we ensure that justice is being served? I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit too shady. No, it's not shady. That's why the police has um, a, a, some, online, some numbers that they dish out to members of the public to always call relevant authorities in the police to handle uh, some of these uh, cases. And those who uh, do that, they 
see the some of the results and i'm sure they, they must have been they can attest to some of these things but back to this uh, uh, the issue we're talking about the person that was appointed to handle this you see I, I said that I, when I started, I said that if this, the allegation is very heavy and that there's no way um, anybody can sweep it under the carpet. That I said also that um, Abakari must answer to all this apart from the uh, statement he has issued. There's going to be more digging deep into some of the uh, questions that had to be uh, answered. Okay. So that is what that panel is going to uh, achieve. And, and like I said also, that panel is some of the finest in terms of interrogation in Nigeria police. So we should expect them, we should wait for them to come out with their report. They are not okay. going to hide the report. Okay. When they appointed the uh, when the, uh, the IG appointed that uh, committee, they made it open. So it's going to be an open. Some I don't think they, right. they will they will ever you know uh, hide it. And that's right. why the, I'm sure the presidency is waiting for the outcome of that. Uh, okay, of the we have to go. Committee. We you have to go. We're, we're out of time. We have to go. Thank you very much. Uh, ben Okeji is a security analyst and a, a security columnist for the Sun newspaper. And of course, um, Mr. Ken Robinson is of Pandem. He's the National Publicity Secretary. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We're looking thank forward you very to, much. We'll look forward you very to much. the outcome of the investigation. Well, thank you all for staying with thank us. You. We'll take a short break now. When we return, Southwest governors are asking for geopolitical zones to have their own Supreme Court. Is this something that we can have? We'll be right back.